COVID-19 is uh, is now causing ravage and damage throughout our country, especially with the latest outbreak of the Delta strain of COVID-19. And I just thought I'd take this time to address our country to ensure our people uh, firstly informed correctly on the the COVID case and to ensure our people are sensitive to the need to personally take responsibility, take care, as well as uh, to be able to uh, know what we're doing and to point them to the right direction. Uh, this is a crisis we're facing, a health crisis as never faced before. Uh, but we're not alone in this crisis. On the record we have thus far, right through our planet Earth, over 242 million people have been infected with COVID-19 and the number of deaths uh, facing planet Earth is now approaching 5 million people. And so uh, for us in Papua New Guinea, the same trend is emerging in us. Uh, with us being exposed to uh, traditional border crossers as well as uh, uh, people who frequently uh, travel to uh, West Papua, uh, we are exposed to the threat of coronavirus uh, in a big way and today as we see Delta variant has now uh, omits us and has increased the number of deaths for instance in January this year we had less than nine deaths but today as we speak and I sadly over 312 uh, uh, people have died from COVID-19 a sad figure uh, when we look at what happened in Fiji for instance Fiji, a country of around uh, 800,000 people, uh, they lost when they had similar sort of wave running through uh, their country, they lost about 600 plus people who died in COVID-19. We now have the 312 uh, uh, person who have died. Uh, that is one life lost is a burden to us and a pain to uh, the family and pain to us as a country. It is no joy to face uh, people die. I want to appeal to our citizens right across our country. Our government has been responsible to put vaccine available in our country for every citizen and resident who want to be vaccinated. Whilst vaccine remains uh, non-compulsory and it's optional for citizens and residents, it is uh, medically satisfied, certified that the vaccine uh, should be taken by everyone. And so, as you all would have known, I became the first person to be vaccinated in our country. I'm still healthy and alive, and I encourage all citizens. Uh, we will be making and continually making vaccines available right throughout our country. And I encourage all citizens to go down the path of vaccination. Uh, scientifically proven, there are less who die from side effect of vaccines than those who die from being infected with the coronavirus uh, and so uh, our citizens are encouraged to take vaccines but for those who don't want to take vaccine I encourage you to keep yourself safe follow the noodle passe don't move around uh, or in places where you're not supposed to be, uh, be. don't go to crowded areas uh, stay safe stay isolated stay and keep to yourself because your exposure to COVID-19 uh, means that your family and your community is exposed to COVID-19. Uh, yesterday I was informed by the report we received from Port Moresby General Hospital on, <coughs> on a random <coughs> testing uh, of people who visited the hospital premises. We are receiving an indication of 15% uh, return positive test for COVID-19. That is a very glaring statistics that is coming out from in Port Moresby. 15% uh, indication of 15% rate of infection in the city and so I just want to encourage our citizens right throughout our country if you do not want to be vaccinated uh, please stay isolated stay localized uh, practice nuplopacin uh, we have been responsible since uh, last year we were amongst the first nation to have a national response in the national pandemic act we passed uh, we were able to mobilize vaccine at the very earliest uh, we were able to shut down our borders at the very earliest, especially international borders. Uh, and when we had our first case, we shut down our nation uh, to try to take stock of where we are as far as COVID-19 is concerned. 
And today speaking, when there's an explosion taking place, in fact, uh, it is indicated that we have a third wave uh, in as far as COVID-19 explosion is concerned. I want to encourage our citizen, safety of yourself, safety of your family, safety of your community, and safety of our country is totally dependent on our attitude, on our response to ourselves, to our family, to our community, to our country. And it is important at this time, we must all know that the Delta strain of COVID-19 is now amidst us and is spreading. And so community must be able to promote nuclear stay safe away from crowd, stay safe in your own home setting, uh, go to work and follow the nuclear and work protocols that is expected of each and every one of us to ensure our country uh, remains uh, in, in defense to the spread of COVID-19. And please, I encourage once again, vaccine is available. Assist your natural immunity with an added boost by taking one of the three vaccines that we've allowed for. Uh, for me as a government, we want to ensure vaccine is available on the self, but going forward, we're working with our provincial health authorities to ensure we build up capacities in our provinces and our, uh, I give commitment to our country going forward this year and next year we will be expanding bed spaces ensuring that the beds we uh, build in our country has oxygen attached to it and the clinical care aspect will be looked at by our government uh, as never done before to ensure that those who are sick uh, we are able to attend to in as far as medical care is concerned and this is something that we're trying to do. I've already asked our finance and planning and uh, treasury team to sit with health department to ensure we unlock resources to support provincial health authorities to ensure the actual health care system is built up to handle a possible blowout of COVID-19 into the future. But for today, Mr. Press, I just want to appeal to our citizens and residents, take responsibility. If you feel unsafe, uh, go to the nearest vaccination uh, booth or clinic or hospital and get yourself jabbed and, and uh, assist yourself being protected from getting COVID-19. If you don't, don't want to be vaccinated, well, we respect your freedom of choice. Uh, our government will not be forcing people to be vaccinated. We encourage people to be vaccinated, but we will not force people to be vaccinated. If you don't want to be vaccinated, stay away from the crowd. Stay away from getting uh, COVID-19 because you're getting COVID-19. If you feed yourself, you will definitely pass it to a vulnerable in your family or in your community and you will lose a loved one or you will use, lose a family member as is the case with the 312 lives we have lost so far to COVID-19 this year and last year. Uh, uh, total, as I said earlier, since 312. And so let me conclude by asking each and every one of us to be responsible to our country, to our community, to our family, and to ourselves. Get vaccinated. If you don't want to get vaccinated, stay isolated. Uh, your government gives commitment. We will work towards ramping up our medical uh, capacities in our provinces uh, and starting with those areas that needs our intervention the greatest. And that's our border provinces, our highlands provinces, and Lei Medang as well as uh, Port Mosby area, Central area, Gulf area, these areas where we are uh, looking in to make great investment in, in as far as health capacity is concerned. I've asked our provincial health authorities to send in their reports and send in their plans. Today as I speak, I've only received from uh, Eastern Highlands and Western Highlands. Now there's a call to all provincial health authorities, get your report coming in. I've already directed the health secretary if some of you do not send your plan in by next week, uh, we are looking seriously into uh, ensuring that you uh, respond. And if you don't respond, well, please, uh, we may as well replace you. This is no uh, light moments. Our country is in red zone in as far as COVID-19 is concerned. There's a call place to all our provincial health authorities right throughout our country send in your plan, our government sends ready to demobilize resources to support your provincial plans in your response to fight COVID-19 by immediate care, medium-term care, as well as a long-term plan to not just for this COVID-19, but any other disease that might ha happen or arise into the future. 
I just take this time to uh, inform our country, COVID-19 is abound, but we're doing everything we can do. You could help the cause by either getting vaccination or stay isolated. Uh, and for us together, we could uh, move through this by uh, coming out of this alive. Hopefully, as we go through this third wave, uh, we will take stock of where we are. And uh, if some message we will pass from our National Control Center in next week, I encourage our citizens to know uh, this is no ordinary times. This message that we pass uh, may mean that yeah, it causes us to assist in uh, making our people stop moving around. Our national control team is looking seriously in uh, the isolation strategy. But as I said, we've been trying to balance the issue of economic well-being as well as our country. And uh, I take this time to inform our country that COVID-19 is getting big. Please take responsibility, assist our country. On Sunday, I'll be, I'm calling a, a combined NCC, uh, uh, defense, police, uh, treasury team, finance team together to look into how we could unbundle resources to support the health sector in a big way going forward. And from that meeting on Sunday, uh, it may mean that we may ask for the nation to step up in as far as the isolation strategy is concerned. And uh, if the country, uh, and the half of the country, if you're still reluctant on vaccination, that you will have to support us in trying to isolate movements, keeping localized in towns and provinces, and for us to take stock of where we are in as far as COVID-19 is concerned, and for us to put uh, other measures to assist fighting, fighting the COVID-19 uh, crisis going forward into the future. Uh, and on this note, I thank the press and media for tuning in. If there's one or two out there who, uh, I, I'm not seeing your face, but uh, if you want to uh, raise a question, uh, you could introduce yourself and I, I would know who I'm responding to and I could make a, a reply to your question. And so this note, I ask uh, any questions from what, uh, any uh, uh, from media or journalists out there. Hi, Mr. Marape, it's Natalie from ABC News. Uh, yeah, N Natalie, I hear you. You can ask your question. We're seeing a big focus and a push on vaccinations at the moment of making them more available to people, getting them out into communities, making it easier for people to get vaccinated. We've had them here since March. Why hasn't that happened sooner? Why didn't we see more urgency sooner? And in that regard, has it been a failure of your government to not do this sooner? Uh, at the central level, we've been, uh, we've been uh, advocating vaccines and, uh, and uh, pushing them out. As, as you know, uh, my recurring uh, issues, uh, uh, complaints with the PHAs and the coordination between PHA, the health department and the uh, national control center. So uh, from where I sit and the advice that I've received, uh, as I speak, vaccines have been available right throughout our country. Uh, today, uh, as I think we, we have received well over Two hundred and eighty-one vaccine, uh, uh, or so far, sorry, we wait. Uh, oh yeah, two hundred eighty-one uh, thousand seven hundred and five vaccines have been rolled out, out throughout the country. Only one hundred and thirty-two people have been vaccinated thus far in our country. So, in my view, vaccines has been uh, rolled out, but uh, the people respond to to be vaccinated is uh, slow in coming, and uh, we, well. As I believe in our people not being forced to do things against their will, and our government has been having a fair uh, approach in this one. If people do not want to be vaccinated, then we now are moving strongly into the space of ensuring our hospitals are, are capacitated uh, in the I I immediate uh, arrangements for medium term as well as uh, long term arrangements. So, coming back to your vaccine question, uh, uh, Natalie, I don't think we've deliberately kept vaccines avail available. That was available in the country away from people. We push whatever we've collected to our uh, medical facilities, but it's uh, people who've been slow in uh, deciding to be vaccinated. Any question? Any other questions? Uh, hi, Prime Minister. Uh, this is Miriam from The National. I wish I could see um, all your face, but I'm not seeing your faces. Uh, uh, are you all connected by face, or I could hear only my voice? Anyway, Miriam, I could hear your voice. Yes. 
Um, I wanted to ask, um, hospitals are facing a shortage of um, oxygen. Uh, what are the plans for the government to respond to the, so to the sh shortage? Yeah, we've, we've uh, as you would have been informed in the last press or the health minister did indicate, we've retired all outstanding bills we've owed, uh, the major supply of oxygen to us, and that's borrowed gas. And so we're working to ensure that a regular supply is stocked right throughout our, our country. And my earlier commentary on us shifting away from just uh, focusing on vaccination, whilst vaccination remains our number one option in the immediate to assist people, for the stop of spread of COVID-19, but knowing people's hesitancy, we're moving in a, now in an aggressive way to ensure oxygen are in hospitals, PPEs are there, uh, the basic care facilities are prepared. And I think at this stage, all our doctors and nurses right around our country, uh, you know, they've come and worked under extreme conditions. Uh, as I speak today, uh, signals have gone out for uh, bilateral partners to send in additional uh, uh, medical helping hands and volunteers in country will be mobilizing all our, uh, our community health workers and nursing, uh, next, nursing colleges and medical schools, giving them basic training for basic response to COVID-19 uh, throughout our country. We've also been giving a call out to Defense Force to mobilize volunteers, especially grade 12, uh, uh, grade 12 dropouts who are in our districts and provinces throughout our country will be mobilized in a big way. And this will be part of our meeting on, uh, on, on Sunday. Uh, Sunday's meeting, we will be coinciding with a uh, national security uh, sort of uh, council meeting. Uh, this it will not be an ordinary meeting for uh, national control center. Uh, this will be an emergency, emergency and crisis meeting for us to try to mobilize resource and uh, enhance on deck for deployment throughout our provinces. And we'll be approaching and on Monday or Tuesday week. Uh, entire plan of how we will handle COVID-19 for the country will be distributed right across so we all have one plan and all PHAs and the country is responding to it as far as dealing with this uh, this uh, red uh, red zone crisis in as far as COVID-19 in our country is concerned. So coming back to your question, uh, not just on uh, Miriam on uh, the oxygen, but we're working to ensure PPE, PPEs are stocked, uh, additional uh, 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 beds are built if it is not uh, permanent belt, uh, beds and temporary beds and as far as isolation care facilities concerned we're looking at the morgue issue and all this so it all go in hand in hand and as you would have been hearing me uh, it is really incumbent upon all our provincial health authorities to send in the plan so that national government could uh, uh, roll out funding to them. I've indicated to our, our treasury and planning and finance team that uh, uh, whilst we've been funding districts and provinces uh, and funding PHAs, now our funding will be based on plan that they submit and we just fund straight to make those interventions, including uh, the oxygen supplies and PPEs and the basic needs to run a hospital and keep the hospitals functioning. All right, any other question? Prime Minister. Prime Minister Maraba, good afternoon. Me, Hilda Wen, and me, the governor crew from Melbourne, Australia. Me got triple ask him. Minister, would you like me to ask him about the triple same time or one at a time? Okay, Hilda, you try to ask him, and me write him, and me try to back him, and me can back him. Thank you, Lars. Thank you, Lord. Tune in all the way from Melbourne. I appreciate your connect connectivity today. Okay, thank you, Prime Minister. So firstly, Prime Minister, uh, with the number of cases, I mean, deaths that you've mentioned, 312, is it correct to say that uh, there are more deaths that are not reported? Uh, because I would assume these are the cases that you are uh, that, that are being recorded from the hospitals, but there could be people who are out in the communities, rural communities, who died from COVID. So the numbers could be more than what is reported. That's number one. Um, number two, um, leading by example, how many members of parliament have actually been vaccinated to lead and show the country that they are serious about this pandemic? And the third question is, with the elections, it's people's right to have an election, but it's also their right to be um, healthy and safe. At what stage of vaccination would uh, 
um, the country be comfortable enough to go into an election because we know this is a time when there's a lot of people, lots of movements. How, how safe is it to get into an election with this pandemic out of control at this stage? Thank you, Prime Minister. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, uh, Hilda, for the uh, in, in three important questions. Uh, let me uh, start by answering in this manner. Our three sort of COVID waves that we are experiencing in our country right now, the spikes that took place, have coincided with sort of uh, some major national events. Uh, for instance, the latest spike we uh, experiencing today uh, really have coincided with the September 16 events that were that just uh, concluded. We had the earliest spike in, in, in March uh, this year, coincided around the time our late Grand Chief uh, passed on. So it's a, it's a growing evidence. Let me encourage our citizens across our country. Crowd and gathering in crowd spreads COVID-19. Uh, whilst the Majority of our youths and, and uh, population in our country may not be uh, may not be severely affected in as far as uh, requiring hospital care for COVID-19, and they may carry the virus without knowing that they are carriers of the virus. You may spread it to a family member who is asymptomatic, uh, who will be fatal, uh, as is the case in the 312 uh, uh, Papua New Guineans who passed. Uh, Hilda, if I could also uh, respond by saying the number we collect are those that are reported and you, uh, your guess could be as good as my guess that we may be experiencing unreported deaths out there. But from, all, from, from every uh, report we're getting right throughout our hospitals who are importantly contact points in as far as us knowing what is happening is concerned, these are the reported cases we're getting. Some may have died that we may not have reported. It's something that I have not at this stage uh, uh, informed uh, to have the accurate information to give to you. Yes, so from reported case, uh, the number of dead is at, uh, 312. Uh, and that's a substantial number, big number. Uh, we may be seeing more deaths into the future. I just encourage our citizens. You can stay away from death by getting yourself vaccinated, or you could stay isolated if you do not want to be vaccinated. Stay at home, stay at your village, don't go to towns, uh, stay away from crowds, don't go to house cries, don't go to sporting events. Uh, in the Nublo Passin, we're now allowing for uh, get together with safe distance of about 20 people, whether at chats or at events. And those, will, those are now being reviewed and as we come together on Monday and Tuesday, we'll be reviewing all, the, all of these uh, nuclear passing requirements. So talk about uh, reported case against unreported case. Your guess, uh, Hilda, could be as good as mine. Only reported case we have is 312. Uh, uh, we may be facing more deaths. I am not informed at this stage to uh, affirm or confirm to you uh, what may be the scenario in as far as un unreported case is concerned. Uh, on the election issues, uh, uh, we will not defer elections, but the Electoral Commissioner is trying to tailor an election that is geared towards allowing people to uh, uh, campaign, as well as uh, come to the voting and votes in a safe, uh, COVID-sensitive manner. Uh, we already have Nuplo Passin, uh, and it's also, uh, our P National Pandemic Act also gives power to the controller to enforce Nublo Passin. And if our people respond to the Nublo Passin and keeping distance and participating the way we instruct to protect our country from COVID-19 blowing up, we will control this one. And so today to election, uh, uh, issue of it is uh, April next year. Uh, we will text over where we are from uh, October, November, December. I may cancel my trip to COP26. I'm looking at this one, depending on the meeting that we will have on uh, Sunday and Monday. Uh, if, uh, if if uh, the situation warrants that I stay at home, uh, I will stay at home to give myself uh, almost uh, uh, 50 to 60 percent of my time into ensuring that we get the health sector, health system uh, responding and functioning to address COVID-19 uh, because it, this thing can wear down our health, our, our health system and sector 
completely so I'm looking at this uh, very seriously and talk about our members of parliament in my view over 70 percent I don't do not have a correct number yet but I believe over 70 percent of our members of parliament have been vaccinated already and, uh, and I've led the, led the front in as far as vaccination is concerned and you know our, we are encouraging our citizens to get themselves vaccinated and we will be making vaccines available right for our country in all our health centers. And so I hope I've answered your question, Hilda. Election time, we'll try to make election uh, uh, go on schedule, but in a COVID safe manner. And we will be monitoring what happens this year towards the end of, end of, uh, uh, end of this year to plan for 2022 elections. And of course, all our uh, MPs are being encouraged to be vaccinated, a balance of 30 to 20%. Hopefully, uh, they get themselves vaccinated at the very earliest. Thank you, Prime Minister Lopekin. No, can worry. Thank you too much for asking, too. All right. If there is no more question, uh, keep keep yourself on a lookout. On Sunday, we'll be having uh, this. Prime Minister. Sorry, Miriam again from the National. Just one last question for yes, me. Yes, ma'am. Um, is the government considering a, a nationwide rollout of um, the mobile um, vaccination? Because we've had um, issues where the rural community cannot access um, the main towns. Is the government thinking of rolling out a mobile um, vaccination program? Yeah, all these things will be will be discussed in our in our Sunday uh, Sunday meeting. So Sunday, I'm elevating that meeting on Sunday to uh, uh, the National Security uh, sort of uh, uh, council meeting. It will be a high meeting where not just the health and NCC, but we're getting defense in, we're getting our National Security uh, Council inside in that meeting. And we're getting report from all provincial health authorities. And we want to ensure that vaccines are available right throughout all parts of our country for those who want to be vaccinated. And we also police the nuclear passing for those who are uh, who feel that they don't need to be vaccinated, well, you're not vaccinated, you stay at home, you go to work in a safe manner, and all this sort of thing will come out in a, in, in a, in a, in a sort of uh, plan uh, that we should announce by Tuesday, if not Monday afternoon. Just Thank one you. final one, Mr. Prime Minister, if I could. Um, just on, you were talking about uh, making funding available to uh, different health services and what their requirements are. Uh, I know there's also been a lot of discussion around people, a lot of, um, I guess, some of the scepticism feeding in is around funding. When can we expect to see the, the audit of uh, funds that have come in for COVID-19 and where it's gone? Uh, that's a good question, uh, uh, Natalie. The uh, funds have been sp uh, spread in, in three or four different sort of uh, disbursement points uh, through the health department and uh, the PHAs, uh, the operational sort of uh, expenditures at National uh, Control Center, and then the districts and provinces. So these have been the main sort of uh, areas where funds have been disbursed. Uh, we've asked for acquittals. Uh, some have acquitted, some have not been uh, sending in the acquittals. It's a work in progress and as I said, for me, going forward, the next round of disbursements will not be uh, distributed to the districts or provinces, uh, but will be, dis will be, dis will be uh, passed through on a plan that we approve. And this plan will involve additional bed spaces, uh, the capacities like oxygen and PPs, etc. So it's each, each provinces through their provincial health authorities have been asked to send this in so that we know what we're funding to achieve a healthcare system that is able to support a pandemic that is now blowing in our face and might, might, might ex uh, blow further into the future. So we just want to make interventions in the health sector uh, as far as care and clinical aspect is concerned, whilst at the same time promoting vaccines and rolling out vaccines uh, for us to possibly reach herd immunity into the future. So yeah, so yeah, hopefully uh, November when we come to budget, I will be able to budget sitting, I will be able to inform the country on where we've sp okay, spent and the acquittals that has come in. The, uh, some of my oppositions continue to spread at 5.7 billion or 6 billion 
as we spend on COVID alone. That is not correct. Uh, 5.6 billion kina has been the funding gap that we've been able to source to fill in to ensure we support our budgets uh, this year and our budget last year. Of that amount, I think two or three or 400 million kina was especially for COVID operation. And those have been distributed to the provinces, districts, PHAs, uh, as well as uh, to our national control center. We'll get the uh, total report done up and uh, we'll inform the country in order when we come back. And if acquittals are still outstanding from those displacement uh, points, we'll also in the report inform the country that this amount has gone to this district or this province or this PHA, uh, the NCC and the acquittals is outstanding. And the country deserves to be informed. And in our November budget sitting also as we prepare budget for 2022, I give assurance that a full report on this will be made uh, to our country. And there have been stakeholders who have supported our, our COVID operations uh, and most of our support to PHAs, almost it has been Akina for Kina. We've given Akina and our, our bilateral partners or our uh, agency partners like UNICEF and, uh, uh, and all these have been, have been also assisting straight. So, uh, to, to be fair on all our family of supporters uh, to our COVID fight uh, in November, we will have a full report on where the dispensers have been taking disbursements have been taking place, and whether they're acquitted or not acquitted, the status will be informed. Our uh, country will be informed in November. All right, thank you, thank you all media for coming in. Please uh, cover this story. Uh, thank you all for covering story in a fair way thus far. We need to inform our country that COVID is real. Uh, for those who do not want to be vaccinated, I ask you all kindly. Uh, uh, you don't want to be vaccinated, we respect your right, but don't spread speculations and fake news. Uh, medical science is based on research and evidence. And statistics point that uh, a greater uh, propensity and ability for those who are vaccinated to be saved from COVID-19 is established through vaccination. So if you choose not to be vaccinated, don't spread uh, fear or rumor in our community. Your family might be exposed to COVID-19 if they want to take vaccine and encourage them to take vaccines. Uh, that's my uh, uh, encouragement to those who are out there who are anti-vax. Then please don't discourage those who want to be vaccinated unless you have a better solution for them. Thank you all. God bless.